Thanks for tuning into the Boston Roll channel. Liking the video and subscribing to the channel are free and easy for you, and they help me out a lot. If you want to go further with your support, Patreon and YouTube membership offer access to the Boston Roll Discord community, early access to lists, written content, things like that. You can have me play your deck on the channel, and the highest tiers come with individual coaching sessions. If you use YouTube membership, you also get sweet badges and emotes integrated here into YouTube. You can support the channel while you shop at tcgplayer.com by using my affiliate link in the video description. And you can play any deck anytime by using a cardhoarder.com loan account on Magic Online. If you want to wear your support, check out the merch store. And of course, thanks for being here. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I got a hot one. It's a legacy video from Patreon subscriber Milan, who has sent me a hybrid deck of two decks I've played before on the channel. This is Eruth Gamble Storm. The decks that are being combined here are Tony Scaponi's Epic Gamble deck, which is kind of an offshoot of Ruby Storm that may or may not actually play Ruby Medallion at this point. There's builds with and without it, but basically the idea is to gamble for Echo of Eons as soon as you have an engine online like Bergy or Horn of Hornfell or whatever, and gamble is just your tutor that lets you play fewer colors than a deck like the Epic Storm, and I have played that deck on the channel maybe more than once if you want to go check that out that's a thing that exists and then a ruth storm which is a deck i've played twice on the channel a ruth is a legend from innistrad crimson vow if you would draw a card exile the top two cards of your library instead you may play those this turn she trades the ability to draw cards normally and store up cards in your hand for getting twice as many right now which is exactly the kind of effect that a combo deck is interested in. The problems that we ran into before the two times I played Aruth Storm is that there's only four of her. Like, you, you don't get more copies than that. Those are the rules. And she is a three mana spell in Legacy. She's also a creature, so dies to swords to plowshares. She's a legendary creature. She gets bounced by Caracas. She's blue and red, so gets clipped by Pyro and Hydroblast. Just a lot to ask out of a three mana spell that has to resolve and stay in play to be your combo engine. The way that we tried to fix that the last time we played the deck was leaned into a reanimator thing. I had some large number of reanimate effects with Faithless Lootings, and I think we were playing Gamble at that point, or maybe it was Entomb. Like, I had some way to get Aruth into the graveyard quickly to try to unearth her, and that gave you, like, more functional copies. If she was countered or destroyed, you could reanimate her again. But a new card's been printed since then. It's Containment Construct. Two mana, two one creature. Whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. If you do, you may play the card this turn. This is not quite Aruth. Like, if you break through with Aruth in play, you get eight cards in exile, and you're just in Flavortown. Containment Construct doesn't give you eight cards, but it does give you the cards. Draw four cards, choose, and discard, or choose X cards in your hand, and discard the rest. So you don't need to pay anything because you get to exile the, all of the cards you're about to discard to Containment Construct. And for this turn only, it's like they're still in your hand. So it is that here for a good time, not a long time effect that Aruth gives you. Short term advantage at the expense of the long term. But this is another way to, you know, Faithless Looting, you get to... Basically, just straight up draw two cards because you can exile the two you discard to containment construct. Gamble. Put that card into your hand. Discard at random. That's a discard. So gamble just becomes one mana demonic tutor. It lay overlays in Aruth, or with Aruth. Yeah, it overlays with Aruth in a in a really interesting way. Though they're not quite the same card, they do help you in the same kind of way, which is in this breakthrough-fueled, faithless looting, gamble, draw and discard style engine, they both pay you out for doing that. Once you're doing that, we're just a Burning Wish deck. We're going to go around and around with the deck. We got Echo of Eons, we got Lion's Eye Diamonds, Lotus Petals, Rite of Flame, and eventually we Burning Wish for... Tendrils of Agony, or Empty the Warrens, or whatever, and win the game. 
I have two concerns just looking at the list without having played it yet. One of them is the one of Unearth in the main deck and one Badlands plus the Lotus Petals to cast it. I'm wondering if that's even worth the spot. Like I guess in a deck with Gamble and Burning Wish, we have a lot of tutors to find specifically Unearth if we're interested in it. But I do tend to look at mana bases in my legacy decks and seeing what the cost is to stretch out another color. And this is kind of a big ask. I think just the other day on the channel, I played a Golgari Nickfit deck that was splashing red just for Obnixilis. And it turned out to be really bad and hard to cast. I'm wondering if we're going to get a similar effect with this Unearth here. We are trying to win with Tendrils of Agony, which is a black card. And the deck has Lion's Eye Diamond that can get double black right away in one shot. I wonder how often it'll come up that you need to fetch a red land or a, a black land to find your other black pip. I feel like that's basically never going to happen. So I'm a little worried about Unearth. The other thing I'm worried about is that we don't actually have that much fast mana. We got Lotus Petal and Rite of Flame that are upfront mana, and then Lion's Eye Diamond, which is mana once we have a Ruth and Containment Construct going. But there's no like Mox Opal or Chrome Mox or anything else. Like it, it is possible that we stick Containment Construct, cast Breakthrough, and then just pass the turn because we can't do anything if we're going on low resource. So it's going to be important in this deck to find the sweet spot where we have as many resources as we're going to get in the game before the opponent gets over their critical mass of being able to answer anything. But if we've built our storm deck around a three mana, easily answerable permanent anyway, I think we're going to try to go off from positions of higher resource than ad nauseum tendrils or the epic storm might try to do. All right, let's just do this. This is the Eruth Gamble from Patreon subscriber Milan. I'm on the play against Arkin, who is a legacy streamer and could be doing anything over there. My hand has Eruth and three mana to caster. I guess I'm keeping. There's no protection here, but I can turn to my Eruth. And if I'm incentivized to go fast, depending on what he's up to over there, I could turn to Eruth, Lion's Eye Diamond, Oh, gee, it's just Caracas right away. Here we are, living in living our best lives. Okay, so I have to trick him into tapping the Caracas. I'm not going to cast a Faithless Looting yet. I feel like I really want to get one with a Ruth. Ancient Tomb. Grim Monolith. Okay. Play some card that doesn't kill me. Oh, this card literally cannot be beat. <laughs> okay. Well, the answer to a Ruth curved into a turn two card I can't beat. Yep, all of my fast mana, everything completely bricked by Karn. I believe there is a Void Snare in the sideboard. Yeah, return target non land permanent to its owner's hand. If I draw Burning Wish, Containment Construct, this is not helpful. I don't really want to show my opponent what I'm doing here. Okay, yep, we're dead. <laughs> yeah, we ran into an Eruth problem, which is Caracas, straight into a Storm problem, which is Null Rod. Or a Null Rod effect. Cool. The good news is, he has no idea what I'm doing. The bad news is, that's because he killed me on turn two. Alright, uh, I think this is a matchup where I'm going to have to go fast. Meltdown and Shattering Spree are cards that I want. I probably want one in the deck and then one in the wishboard. I don't think I'm going to need Defense Grid for this matchup. Then I can turn that into a main deck empty. Do I want to Blood Moon this opponent? Probably not. But it is a thing that exists. No, I think I just need to go fast. So we get an empty, a Meltdown, and... Do I want to spend Burning Wish on Artifact Removal, or should I just put Shattering Spree in the main deck? I could bring Gamble into the main deck, take that out of the wishboard, and just maximize my turn one Echo of Eons potential. I could YOLO the Duress also. I think I want the Gamble on the play. Duress I'll consider for game three on the draw. 
if he gets the first move that changes things. How about that Caracas, by the way? <laughs> Just good deck building over here. Okay, I have a an Aruth. Oh, I have a turn one Echo. I'm going to keep this and hope that he did not sideboard appropriately. Okay, I'm going to lay out my artifacts because I don't want to discard them. And I'm going to hope that this is not a blue deck. Echo of Eons into the hand. Faithless looting in the graveyard. Make blue, 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 and red, red, red. And let's echo. Probably should have left two blue floating, not two red. Ooh, we're in business. Okay, I get to Eruth and then Breakthrough and hope we're in business. Hasn't interacted with me yet. Can I get an F6? Two of my Burning Wishes are leaving right now, but it's not getting better. We're committed to the line at this point. I have to discard my hand, and I found zero fast mana. Uh, that was the thing I was worried about. Yeah, just zero fast mana. A Lotus Petal keeps the game going, but I guess we're just dead instead. Disappointing. All right, let me see the Caracas. We did just Wheel of Fortune, a non-blue deck. So it, it's possible his hand is just unplayable over there. And we actually need that to be true. Outpost, go. All right, Aruth, get us out of this. Lion's Eye Diamond, let's get that into play. And might as well cast the Rite of Flame, because we don't get it later. There's no Faithless Lootings in my graveyard. Three mana available right now. Candelabra, okay. Uh, that is four mana. No, it's still three mana. Yeah, that doesn't actually change the amount of mana available. Okay. And you get to play Candelabra for free? God damn it. <laughs> All right, that's going to be a tough one to beat. Yeah, the Candelabra gets in for free, but it doesn't change the net mana available right now. Okay. I do get to see a lot of cards right now. Make blue, blue, blue. I'm going to brainstorm first because that gets me more cards. I don't have to put cards back. Get my land for turn. Fetch. Volcanic Island. I can melt down. I have to melt down for two, which costs three mana, which I can do. Or I could just keep trying to push through this. So three, four. These are all my burning wishes. Two in the graveyard, two in exile. So if I don't win right now, I actually can't win anymore. I don't think I'm winning a game where Sphere of Resistance is in play. If I spend four mana right now to melt down for two, that clears the sphere, and then I can Faithless Looting and hope it finds a Lion's Eye Diamond. Oh, right of Flame! And now all of my Burning Wishes are gone. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, that, uh... That sphere did exactly enough because this Rite of Flame gets me the next Faithless Lootings and a um, million cards into my deck. Yeah, just disruptive enough. And now I don't think I can actually win the game anymore. Oh, I did bring one Empty of the Warrens into the main deck. I can still do that, I guess. Well, now I'm done. All right. Can't beat Karn at all. <laughs> well, I did what I was supposed to do and missed. We even got a second shot at it. Sphere of Resistance did exactly enough. We are a glass cannon in a variety of different directions. Like this fragile creature is the engine, and then we also need our artifact fast mana to both show up and be usable, and this deck is built to squeeze all of it. Ugh. On to the next one. I'm on the play in round two. I'm going to keep this. It's got Construct and Aruth. And this is what I was talking about when I was talking about uh, trying to go off with higher resources. This is not a deck where you Lotus Petal out Containment Construct and then win. It's, it's going to be slower than that. This is going to take some sculpting. Hope I don't get stifled here. Jesus. All right. Don't stifle me, bro. I'm quitting magic. It's over. <laughs> uh, and now we have to just desperately brainstorm trying to find anything. Uh, I'm dead. I am brainstorm locked with no path forward. All right. Well, sometimes you get stifled in the year of our Lord 2022. 
I wonder if this is the Max Dorshin bullshit pile. Max tweeted a deck recently that was, uh, it was basically just like DRC, Uro, Merktide region, and a bunch of tempo cards, and that deck had two stifles in it. So, looks like we found that one. I think I want the fourth defense grid here. The fourth defense grid in the sideboard is weird, I will say. Like, what are we hedging against where we're like three is the correct number in the main deck, but sometimes I want four? I don't know. I, I just feel like that number needs some work. Like, that's a sideboard slot that could be used somehow, some other way. I think I don't want the unearth. It's in the wishboard if I want it, but it doesn't seem great in the main. And maybe I don't get this empty. It's like the sideboard is just so tight. Or, like I said, maybe this fourth defense grid is actually the, the trap. But if you have Stifle on top of whatever normal counter spells you have, uh, I guess I want more. Okay. I'm broiding out Unearth, bringing in Defense Grid. The sideboard's really thin here, because every card in the main deck's doing a lot of work, and we're a Burning Wish deck, so it's not like we have millions of options over here in the board. There's really, like, four or five cards you could conceivably bring in in this 15-card sideboard. Okay, this hand does not get stifled, but it also doesn't... I'm not exactly guns blazing here. And I'm soft to Wasteland. I'm going to try to play it slow. Just play turn two containment construct. Like I could write a flame mid out this turn, but I don't think that's the best use of write a flame. We've seen lines fall apart based on one mana before, so I'd rather use that one mana on the combo turn then on the containment construct turn one line of fetch land well let's get that out of the way now their opponent is a is a criminal over there putting stifle in their deck containment construct i'm fine if this sniffs out a daze or a force of will or a sword of plowshares or whatever the tricky thing with both construct and eruth though is i can have the engine creature in play cast Faithless Looting, and then they source the Plowshares in response. And then when Looting resolves, I don't get four cards, or I don't get to keep them. Okay, taking me out black. I boarded out my only black card. Checkmate. Okay. Uh, I think this is an opportunity to brainstorm. Or I could write a flame out Eruth, and then brainstorm is just a heater next turn. I hate how soft a daze I am right now, and in the Wasteland Stifle deck, they have to have daze. And we got a Force of Will for the trouble, getting rid of Snapcaster Mage. And let the beatdowns commence. Opponent's down to 16. We're doing work out here. Is this the Stoneforge Mystic? What's the payoff for this deck? Yes, it is. Okay. But we know they don't have daze, because they would have played it. Ooh. Do I want this? Is it too late? Is it perfect timing? Oh, better late than never, I guess. Let's check the hand. And one very serious question here. All right, force pitching brainstorm. Do I offer the trade? And I don't think that I do. Like, it would buy me a lot of time if they block with Stoneforge Mystic and then Cauldra stuck in their hand. But also, I, I feel like I want as many engines as possible against this tempo deck with their really aggressive resource denial. Under did not shuffle and did not find a land, so they have some sort of interaction. On brainstorm, don't don't hurt me now. Spell pierce, okay. Do you, I, I once again? Uh, I'm not going to offer the trade. Uh, spell pierce, stifle, multiple force of wills. Rest in peace. Okay, rest in peace does matter. That shut down's containment construct, so I should be attacking now. Because construct lets you. Exile discarded cards from your graveyard. It's not you may exile them instead. And I'm going to get an Aeruth on the stack while I can. Ugh, found the days. Ugh, this deck. Somehow. I mean, I'd rather play against this deck than the one who played against in round one, but we are seeing how just all different types of legacy interaction are bad for what we're doing. Gamble. Horrible. What's left in my sideboard right now? Good Void Snare, try to set up a multi-turn thing where I bounce the germ token and slow this game down. 
Burning Inquiry would be a cool one, except that it's not. Gamble doesn't work anymore because of Containment Construct, uh, because of the Rest in Peace. I guess I could Burning Wish for Burning Inquiry and just try to get weird. Now I think I need the Void Snare. Just try to buy some time. Alright, Void Snare it is. Get to attack. The Construct beatdowns. Opponent could be at 6 if I had been attacking the whole time. Enlightened Tutor. How are you going to have Stifle and Enlightened Tutor in the same deck? This is insane. Breaking all the rules over there. Days Enlightened Tutor, Stifle. My god. And it, it's working because my deck isn't functioning on its own. But yeah, that's, that's not good. All right, we're dead. Very weird deck. I am recording in a uh, collection token period. Like Magic Online, you can spend like $30 or whatever to have access to every card for a while. We are in that period, so the leagues might get fucking weird. On to the next one. We're a few rounds into the video. Thanks for sticking with me. Friendly reminder that if you're still here and having fun, smash that subscribe button. And if you want to play what I'm playing, you can use my affiliate link for TCG Player to support the channel while you shop for cards, and you can try any deck anytime with a cardhoarder.com loan account for Magic Online. All these links are in the video description below. Now back to the league. I'm on the draw for round three. I'm going to keep. We'll see if this opponent is also just racing to the finish line. Oh no. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see if they value Eruth, Burning Wish, or Lion's Eye Diamond the most. I hope they take Eruth, honestly. Because if they leave me LED and Burning Wish, I can Echo on turn two. Just wish for Echo. Oh, they took the LED. That was smart. Okay. Uh, Mountain. And I think I'm just going to pass. I don't want them to know. Have the perfect information. Like, leaving a Lotus Petal in my hand means it's susceptible to discard, but if they... But it also gives them perfect information to know that I can speed out my Aeruth. Dark Confident. All right. I think the best draw on my deck is another Lotus Petal right now. Or a Rite of Flame. Something to get me one mana deeper than I am. Does this deck play any removal? I don't know. But I'm going in. But before this can get Thought Seized, I'm going to put her into play. Healthy Void Walker. Okay, that doesn't matter much. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going to get to Breakthrough. In the Void Walker turning off Echo kind of sucks. And it turns off Containment Construct. That also sucks. But we're starting to do the thing. I'm just going to fetch another blue source right now. Grab a Volcanic Island. Cast a Breakthrough from my hand. Do I want to pay the one to keep the other Breakthrough? Because paying one mana is worth eight cards right now. I think that's worth doing. So I exile eight cards, discard one card. It's the Burning Wish. Then I get the other Breakthrough to exile another eight cards. How do we do? There is a Lotus Petal here and a Rite of Flame. We actually did really poorly. Yeah, this Void Walker, I, I didn't give it a lot of credit, but it's, it's very bad. I can Rite of Flame for an extra red to cast Faithless Looting with a red floating. Or I can brainstorm and see an extra two cards straight up. There are three Lion's Eye Diamonds and one Lotus Petal still in my deck. I think I need to write a flame. Is that even true? I'm going to see six cards. No, I think I just want to see the most cards possible right now. But looting hitting another looting with write a flame to cast it. No, I think I need to brainstorm now. Come on, deck, don't fail me now. Found a Lion's Eye Diamond. Okay, okay. We're doing stuff again. So LED can make red, and then right of flame. Then I can loot, 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 loot. Just rip through my deck here. There's two... There's two LEDs left. Faithless Looting. Did not find one. Faithless Looting. All right, there's a Lion's Eye Diamond and a Lotus Petal. I can currently tendrils them, so I think it's time to just go for it. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Make Black, and Burning Wish. Yes, get the tendrils. Okie dokie. 
ships in the night over here. Okie dokie. <laughs> we did it. We did a Ruth related business at least once in this league. This opponent has graveyard hate in their main deck and lots of discard and their own combo kill. But we are just going to be whirling shit at the wall and hope it sticks. Blood Moon is kind of interesting because they're a Dark Depths deck. But I don't think I actually want to go there. Defense Grid, I'm pretty sure I don't need. I can bring an empty into the main deck. I don't think I want to be duressing. I, mean, I should probably cut on Earth because they have main deck. Graveyard Hate. There's just not that much to bring in. I could bring in my own duress. So that's empty and duress. And the Blood Moons could buy some time. Yeah, I'm not really excited about this sideboard plan, but I'm going for it. Okay, uh, I'm going to keep this. It has a shot. It has a pretty good gamble at echoing on turn one. I've been duressed. Right, they're probably taking gamble, would be my guess. Quick breakthrough, okay. Does that indicate that they don't know how what gamble does, or does it indicate that they have graveyard hate? I don't know. I'm gambling for LED. All right, we're doing it. Mind break trap or whatever. Gets me. All right, they didn't have it. Fresh sevens all around. Once again, like, wheeling a non-blue deck on turn one is powerful because it's kind of like a mulligan to seven that they can't mulligan again if it's bad. But they did get a chance to land drop and duress me, so they spent mana. Right, containment construct is off. Naruth is still good. I'm going to charge out Naruth here. I do have two of them, so they would have to answer the one in play and the one in my hand to disrupt the combo over the next two turns. I already used my Echo, which is my big graveyard card. Uh-oh. What are we dark ritualing out here? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> that works too. If you're not familiar with this combo, Helm of Obedience is target player mills a card until they mill X cards or until X cards or a creature hit their graveyard. And because of Dorothy Voidwalker, no card will ever hit my graveyard. This is a two-card combo that exiles your opponent's deck. Okay, that was a pretty good Echo of Beyonce for them. I don't think anything's changing. Uh, I, I can decide if I want the Blood Moons or not. That's the, the big change I can make. I could also put Void Snare in my main deck, but I still think it's better in the board. They are a Saga deck. They're also a Leyline of the Void deck, which... Bringing in the Gamble... Is helps speed the deck up, gives me more explosive turn ones, but it's also really soft to ley line. But I'm soft to ley line anyway. Let's go. Play for speed. Maybe I should have both empties in the main, because if I'm at a point where I'm burning wishing, I'm probably good for tendrils. And I should be just small balling it, trying to make eight to ten goblins and getting over the finish line. Well, I have another turn one echo. If my opponent doesn't lay line me. <laughs> Luckily, I also have turn one air roof, which does incinerate a large amount of my fast mana in my deck to do it. But it is necessary. My entire hand is blank from the ley line. This is just fucking bad. Cast a discard spell. Oh no, dark ritual. Duress, okay. That's not important. All these cards are blank anyway. Put the echo. All right. Sudden edict, you animal. Okay. Let's start the slow process of rebuilding. If my opponent can follow up with anything, <laughs> like Ursa Saga, come on. All right. Here we go. I don't think duress is going to be part of my game plan anymore, so I'm just getting Volcanic Island. I gotta try to beat down with Construct or find another Aerith. Okay, that's a good use of Containment Construct because it doesn't work anyway. Gamble. I don't think I want to gamble here. And I'm worried about what's going to pop out of the Saga, but Leyline's already shutting down my graveyard. They don't have another land. They're about to lose this one. Expedition map. Okay, they need a land. I thought he's Taking Rite of Flame is pretty annoying, but they're still not doing anything. Ooh. 
The temptation to fire those off now is pretty high, so I will do it. Ooh, got there in tremendous fashion. I'm going to put back the two gambles, play Delta, play LED, and pass. I can do like an actual fair value breakthrough next turn. If I still have my card in my hand next turn. Dark Ritual. Please just activate Expedition Map with this. Nice. That's just good value. Urborg. That gives me black mana. Excited about it. And they didn't have a use for the extra one. My Clantic Islands are already rumbling necropolises. Don't need more of that. I'm going to break through for two. I get to draw four cards, and then I have to discard all except two cards in my hand. That's better than Faithless Looting. Ooh. Maybe I'm supposed to float red. If I discard... I want to keep Rite of Flame and empty. Okay. This is what I got. They now have two mana. Damn it. <laughs> Mono black sucks against my last cannon combo deck. Voidwalker. Okay, now they have an actual win condition. Burning Wish. Uh, that can put some number of goblins in play. Uh, can I echo here? Do I want to echo here? Uh, that's a better question. Do I want to give them a fresh seven? If I write a flame, that's two. I can exactly echo here. I'm going to do it. I'll have my land drop for the turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, this works. Okay. Write a flame. I have to hold priority. Write a flame. Or Burning Wish resolves, get Echo, cast Echo the hard way, brush seven cards, gamble breakthrough Aruth. It's mostly good stuff. They did just get a fresh seven. I am going to pass the turn and if like making six goblins there is not going to win the game. They could like go to their turn because empty ends up under Voidwalker. They could just go to their turn and like Dark Ritual cast empty. But if they found a helm, I lose. Like, whatever. Okay, sure. I did what I could. The empty was not winning that game and didn't spin into a Ruth right away. Having turn zero ley line that game was, was brutal. If they just had like duress into Voidwalker, I would have been able to echo before they did anything. But under the thumb of ley line the whole game. Tough beats. <laughs> this league is is rough, uh, but we did do the thing at least once this game. It's getting better. On to the next one. I am on the play in the fourth round. I'm going to keep this hand for sure. I'm just deciding what I'm going to do with it. Because I actually do have the unearth and black mana if I would choose to pursue it. I could also just turn one echo, but that seems like such a mistake against just mystery deck that could be blue. I think I'm just going to pass here until I have more information. A mountain. Oh no. Am I going to get punished by a Chalice of the Void? Okay. This looks like it's more likely Painter than Red Prison. Painter is a Red Blast deck though, so that doesn't really help my cause. <laughs> Alright, I found the Lion's Eye Diamond. So I have like the whole squad here if I want to go for Echo, but I'm all in if I do. What can I wish for right now? I could wish for Duress, just take a moment. It would be pretty embarrassing to get Blood Mooned here, or Trinisphered. Okay, do I want to play like this as Red Prison and just fucking yeet, or do I want to play like it's Painter? I think I want to treat it like Red Prison. It's just a more likely deck for them to have. Ugh. I'm so scared. How do people play decks like this? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Um, I could... I could wish for the other Echo. That way I'm not ice cold. If they are Painter. If I wish for the other Echo, I'm going to play one of them. There will still be one in my deck. Okay. I guess that, that plays. And I'm going to get Basic Island and Badlands. Is that the line? Do I want Badlands? <laughs> this is so hard. I wish my opponent had just played Goblin Guide and made this easy on me. Badlands is the red either way. 
Alright. I'm gonna Burning Wish for the other Echo. Echo of Eons in my hand. Lion's Eye Diamond on the stack. Let's take a spin, kids. I chose somewhat correctly. I did at least insulate what I could against that. Now I need a land off the top to Echo again. But Aeruth was going to lose to Pyroblast also. Brainstone. Land. Uh, brainstorm, I'll take. Ooh, that found a land. And a containment construct. Do I want this construct? I do not. I'm going to put construct pedal back, play the land. I'm drawing pedal next turn. If there is a next turn. If they have another Pyroblast, I'm just dead and it doesn't matter. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Ah, ah, relentless, relentless destroying of me in this league. Yeah, this would have been the game to turn one Echo, but you can't know that until it's too late. Tormod script, Jesus. All right. All right. All right. I've seen enough. I believe it. You win. I wasn't going to beat the card anyway, and then they're like, you know what, Tormod script. Let's go to the sideboard. Bring in an empty defense grid actually does kind of play, but if I'm trying to go fast, that doesn't matter. I'll, I'll leave defense grid as optional. I want meltdown in. And I have one more slot right now. I think I just want the other gamble. Let's let's go fast on the play against this non blue deck. I have a turn to Aeruth, which we've seen is not necessarily good. I am going to keep, though, because I can Faithless Looting turn one, start sculpting in the, the correct direction. If Faithless Looting finds Lion's Eye Diamond, I can, I can gamble and echo this turn. Right. Uh, a second Aerith is kind of exciting. I'm going to get rid of the gamble, and is it Burning Wish or Breakthrough? Maybe it's the backup Aerith. No, because my hand's going to be empty anyway. Yeah, I'm going to lose the Burning Wish, and I'm going to play Petal. Not that I expect Discard out of this deck, but they might have Chalice. Probably not. Inner Servant. All right, we're just sprinting to the end step, or the end of the game here. Named Red. Interesting. I guess all my important cards are blue anyway. Why not? Red of Flame and Lotus Petal are my, my hot draws this turn. Come on, Red of Flame or Lotus Petal? In my construct. That's not bad. That lets me do something this turn. I'm going to play construct this turn, save my lotus petal. If they follow up with Karn next turn, then you got me. Layla. Okay, I don't really care about Layla. The Chrome Mox is rough. That represents Pyroblast again. They have a pretty good beatdown strat here, even if nothing else works. Exiled Leyline of the Void. You're not casting that one. Come on, mana. All right, we got some mana. The first Aruth is going onto the stack here. Breakthrough. Moment of truth. How'd we do? All right, Red Blast didn't happen. Is there any mana in this pile? Two Lion's Eye Diamonds. Let's go. LED, LED. And I think I want to make blue with the first one. That gives me a big old brainstorm for another LED. A Lotus Petal. Okay, we're ripping here. I make red, and then right of flame, right of flame, faithless looting, breakthrough, another four cards, and can't really melt down here. I have two burning wishes, enough mana to burning wish for duress. Okay, I'm going to Burning Wish first for Duress. Hit that. Duress you. What are we working with? Nothing. Perfect. And then Burning Wish for Tendrils. And we did it. <laughs> okay. No disruption that time. They tried to aggro me out. That's not going to work. This deck is bonkers when it does what it's supposed to do. Like, completely deranged level of power when Aruth is actually ripping. Does anything change? Play draw. Uh, gamble gets worse. And we've seen Leyline. Ugh. What's up with people bringing in Leyline against me? Why do they know that's so good? Dane construct. it is rough that 
ley line shuts that down. Blood Moon kills Urza Sagas, but they are a mono red deck. I'm not really interested in that. Yeah, if we have ley lines, I'm going to cut the unearth also. I think I want defense grids back in because red blast is a pretty significant problem. This is too many cards. I could shave a construct. Because it depends on how hard I want to hedge in the direction of what if they have ley line? Because what if they don't? Then I need my deck to function. I am going to shave a construct. Let's do this thing. I have both empties in the main deck now. If I'm at a point where I'm shredding and can burning wish for something, tendril should be good enough. I like the idea of getting scrappy with the two empties actually in the, the 60 in a, a matchup like this. I'll keep this on the strength of defense grid. Oh, it's on a mult of four so far. Uh oh, I was hoping for a ley line. If they mold the four, are looking for a a fast win, that's dangerous. Oh, one card left in their hand. If it's painter servant, then it's not a land to cast it. All right. Uh, the torment script is a pain in the ass though. It's gonna scalding tarn go. Let's see what their last card they kept is. Yeah, we're just passing the turn now. I am a brainstorm deck, but I don't have a blue land in my hand, so I might as well thin out. A possible land I could draw right now. Just draw another one anyway. Name a construct. Let's go. I don't need to grid until I'm going to cast a blue spell. Uh oh. Okay, they did have the whole squad together here. We're one mana source away from dead right now. Oh, I think I'm going to have to break through. Oh, okay. A little extra mana for the road. I'm going to fetch for the thinning. Oh, but breakthrough doesn't even work here. Damn it. This fucking Tormod script. Rate of Flame. Maybe they'll crypt in response and cut mana off the second Rate of Flame. Couldn't fool them. How many cards do I need to leave in my hand here? I don't think this is a full value breakthrough. I'll leave two cards in my hand and two mana floating. That's enough to melt down for two if I find it. Okay, uh, land, 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 defense grid, and land. Let's see if they are mod script in response to this. They did indeed. Okay, those are gone. I can still Faithless Looting. Keep the party going here. They do get to keep all these cards. I'm going to discard Brainstorm because I'm going to cast it this turn anyway. And I guess the, the defense grid because I kind of want the land maybe someday. Use the Brainstorm. LED Burning Wish. My goodness. I'm one mana short of making this happen. Am I though? No, because LED can discard the Burning Wish. I can get... Oh, something can happen here. If I put back Volcanic Island and Polluted Delta. I'll have four mana to work with. Yeah, I can Shattering Spree. LED. Red, red, red. Exile Burning Wish. Play Burning Wish. Yeah, I just grab the Shattering Spree. And try to win this game fair and square. I'm going after the land. I don't care about Grindstone. I'm killing Painter in the land. And I'm just going to start attacking. All right. And I have a Faithless Looting in the graveyard. And Construct's still in play. The second Grindstone doesn't matter. Faithless Looting. I know there's a land under here. Flashback Looting. Oh, why did I think there was a land under there? Oh, there was. The Aruth was the second card. That's right. I am not going to exile Volcanic Island because I am going to exile Polluted Delta and I only get to play one of these. Okay, Aruth is charged up. Oh no, do you have another painter? Don't you dare. What the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. All right, I got to draw a breakthrough. Yeah, the last two cards in their hand were another grindstone and another painter. And now I am DOB. Uh, I believe I should fetch here. That is. There is a basic island left, in, or mountain left in my deck, so lands are bad. Come on, breakthrough. Lion's Eye Diamond doesn't help me. I'm just dead? Really? Oh, wait, no. If you would draw a card, exile the top two cards of your library instead. So I don't actually draw cards. Oh, I, I might actually win this game. Yeah, because if they... Oh, wait, no. There's no way to win this game. What the fuck? We're just going to stare at each other until... Judgment Day. Yeah, like if they grindstone me, I don't draw cards anymore. 
but I can't attack through a 1-3 either. Okay, I don't have a deck. There's Faithless Lootings in there, but... Oh, there's Echo of Eons. I can still, I can still win. Because I don't draw cards. Lion's Eye Diamond. Blue, blue, blue. Echo of Eons, which exiles 14 cards. I'm actually winning. I'm going to win this shit after getting grindstoned. Oh, yeah. Put this on my fucking tombstone. Okay, my opponent has seven cards in hand. Do I have enough mana to make this happen? Even... Okay, if I go... There's one land... Or there's more lands than that in the deck now, so I can Bloodstain Mire and fetch. Get another Volcanic Island. And then Defense Grid, just in case. Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Bright of Flame. A brainstorm here. It's looking for there it is. Storm and mana to get the tendrils. We beat a grindstone activation. What was I even worried about? Eruth doesn't draw cards. FTW. We also didn't need this much storm because they were at 12. But we like stunting for the camera around here. Nice grindstone. <laughs> Woo! Not only did we dodge the 05, but we did it in spectacular fashion. Holy guacamole. On to the next round. I'm on the draw in the final round. This hand is one land away from being bonkers. I'm pretty sure I'm going to mulligan it. But with a second land, we get defense grid and then containment construct. Crack LED for black. Choose to exile Unearth to Construct. Choose to leave Aeruth in the graveyard. Cast Unearth. Get Aeruth with Black Black Floating. That can cast the other Construct. And then we're just like a spell away from Insanity. Uh, that's exciting, but I don't think I can keep this hand. I'm going to mulligan. I am happier with this somehow. I'm going to pop the Badlands in the deck. This is a hand that would benefit greatly from Unearth, but I can fetch the Badlands if I want it. Let's see if we end up 5 for 5 on Tier 3 decks. And by Tier 3, I don't mean like quality, just like Tier 3 plus of likelihood we would ever play against them. This league has been wild. And my opponent passed their entire turn without doing anything. Is this just like a shitty reanimator hand? I'm going to Faithless Looting, try to speed this up a bit. Okay. Echo of Eons and... Is it the other looting or one of the Aeruths? I think it's one of the Aeruths, because if I draw Lotus Petal, I can Burning Wish for Unearth. I don't know. Let's see what's going on over there. Are you Manalus Dredge that chose to play first by accident? Are you Reanimator on a slow discard enabler hand? Suddenly Volcanic Island. That's weird. What the hell is going on over there? Did they just take turn one off for funsies? Oh, are they Storm that didn't want to expose their one land to wasteland. Okay, yeah, they were storm that wanted to didn't want to expose their one land to wasteland. Fair enough. Oh, well, now Burgie's in play. And echoing against this deck's going to be real weird. Is there anything I want to burning wish for now? Yeah, I want a burning wish for the the unearth in case I get another turn. I get the badlands cast burning wish for unearth. And I'm going to pass the turn from here. They can see what I'm lining up. They're untapping with Bergy. I don't really expect to get another turn, but if I do, I've planned for it. And by the way, the answer is no. We're not going to get a normal deck in round five. Lion's Eye Diamond. All right. And I'm just going to F6. I don't have anything. Chrome Mox is worth two mana if they choose to imprint and one mana if they don't. Another Chrome Mox. All right. What's left in the tank here? I hope it's a Galvanic Relay and Pass. But it could be an Echo, and then they're just ripping. They could have echoed last turn, unless they just drew LED. Oh, weird. They must have just drawn one of those two things, or else they could have just gone last turn. Okay. I don't expect to beat a Bergy with Fresh 7. And they also just cleared my Graveyard and cleared my Burning Wish target. Okay, I can have 6 now, but... If I get another turn, I actually am doing okay. All right, now I can definitely have six. This is the mirror match where their deck is probably better constructed. Gamble. Yeah, this is the actual epic gamble. Bergy is just like Aruth, except 
doesn't require an extra color in your deck and doesn't die to Pyroblast and doesn't force you to go Hellbent in weird situations. Gamble discarded Defense Grid. I'm sure that's not what they gambled for. Another gamble. Burning Wish. Storm is 8. Uh, so I am dead. Yeah, they got the Tendrils. And they have Black Black in the Opal and the, the Petal. Yeah, it was just a turn, turn late here. Feel like I win this game on the play? Or if I could accelerate it all? But I cannot do either of those things. They're even going to Tendrils me to 1 and then win with combat. Like a boss. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. Okay, so we are speed running the Echo of Eons mirror. I'm going to cut my defense grids. Meltdown, their deck is worse than mine is. With a Meltdown. Bring in the Duress. And emptying the Warrens probably isn't going to do anything in the matchup. I think I just want Gamble to go as fast as possible. There it is. Off we go. I am on the... Well, obviously I'm on the play. <laughs> it's game two and I lost. I am keeping this hand with turn one action. I get to right a flame into Echo, leaving blue-red floating on a fresh seven, and hope my opponent doesn't have Leyline of the Void or Mind Break Trap. It's pure cannibalism if anything like that happens. We both kept seven, and it's go time. I could avoid the Mind Break Trap, by not casting Rite of Flame, but I'm not a cop. Let's go. Rite of Flame, Lion's Eye Diamond, Sack for Blue, Echo with Blue Red Floating. Moment of Truth. Yeah, we're in there. <laughs> the Duress. What a tragedy. Rite of Flame gets me up to. Oh no, this didn't actually do anything. If I gamble again, there's not an Echo in my deck. What would I be gambling for? A Ruth and just try to set up next turn? I think I do want to gamble for a Ruth. Discard a Volcanic Island. Okay. It's not sexy, but it was a start. Let's see if how hard they're coming back on me. I did just mulligan them without the option of going to six. City of Traders. Lotus Petal. Vergi. I'm so jealous of Vergi in their deck. Lions, I don't know. Uh, I gambled for nothing. Another Lions, I diamond. I might just be dead now. This is great. Rim monolith. My God. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. They're not passing the turn. They're tapping more mana. Another grim monolith. One card left in hand. What could it be? They could just be dumping out artifacts here. Nope. Actually had the echo. <laughs> Me and my my big mouth. I lose the duress, I lose the, the Ruth, everything's gone. I've been hacked, all my apes gone. I mean, this hand's bonkers if I get another turn. Lotus Petal, I'm just f 6 whatever. Kill me, set me free from this prison. LED. Oh, yeah, just dead already. That was quick. Yeah, that's the difference between Bergy and Eruth. <laughs> Yuck. One and four, final record. We did not o the the league, so count that. And the one win we got was in spectacular fashion, defeating an opponent who grindstoned us to zero cards in deck, then untapping and easily winning. That was exciting. All the problems with this deck that I outlined the previous times I played it are still problems with the deck. Aruth just dying to a stiff breeze, not lining up against anything that is played in Legacy. Like, Lightning Bolt is the only card in Legacy, like, only interactive card that doesn't completely blank a Ruth and everything you're trying to do with her. Containment Construct is a cool second layer to it. It really opens the deck up to Graveyard Hate, which, I mean, we're in Unearth and Echo of Eons deck, so there's a little bit of Graveyard stuff. Rite of Flame is a card that cares about your Graveyard a little bit. Like, there, we're already, like, a little soft to Graveyard Hate and just Containment Construct becomes a 2-1 two, for 2, just Bronze Sable or whatever, uh, for when there's a Rest in Peace or Leyline in play. That's tough leaning into something that's already probably going to be happening. I think it's poetic and appropriate that we lost so spectacularly to actual Epic Gamble 
in the fifth round because that deck is doing what we're doing, but it's doing it a lot cleaner and a lot better. And I think if you want to be in this sort of whipping spells around, relying on a three mana legend kind of space, Epic Gamble with Bergy is just a better way to do it. I do love, though, that this whole spectrum of storm options exists. Like, you could just play the Epic Storm or Ad Nauseum Tendrils. There are a bunch of, like, squeaky clean, well-defined, high-tier storm decks you could play. You can also play Ruby Storm or the Epic Gamble in sort of that, like, weird but still good space. And then even if you want to get even weirder, if you are a brewer, if you are a, a Johnny who enjoys doing something strange for the sake of being strange, a Ruth Storm is there too, just lurking behind the Bergy decks uh, in, in the next Storm tier down. It's a tough sell. I could not recommend this deck to anyone who actually wants to win a tournament, but the raw power is there. We did have a lot of fun on the turns where we had a Ruth available. I would want more mana in this deck somehow. I think Mox Opal is the next best one we're not playing. Like Containment Construct and Defense Grid are artifacts to turn it on. And if you're ripping through your deck eight cards at a time, hopefully you can find Metalcraft along the way. But multiple times we either untapped with Earth earth or we had her in play and drew four or eight cards and then just passed the turn and all those cards got exiled because i couldn't cast them didn't have the first mana to get it started that's tough and that's what the epic gamble is doing it's called the epic gamble because it's based off the epic storms construction and the epic storm plays wishclaw talisman defense grid all these incidental artifact cards that are just good anyway so it gets access to mox opal and just the mana's a lot better. And this deck is pretty close to doing that. Uh, I feel like I'd want to lean into that farther if I kept exploring this deck. I'm going to leave it here, though. This is a Ruth Gamble. We won a match. This was a crazy league. Every deck was insane. And some of them were, like, custom-built to defeat what we were doing. But that's what happens when you register a card like a Ruth and Legacy that dies to everything. Oh, well. At least we had one spectacular match on the record. Milan, thank you for asking me to play this. Everyone else, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links in the video description, the Patreon, the merch, all that stuff. Go click it, and I'll see you next time.